The Holocaust is the most known genocide in human history. Around 11 million people died from various methods, but many things are lesser known about the Holocaust. In particular, we're going to look at the medical works of several doctors who tested and in many cases killed their test subjects while working. A quick warning before we begin this video. The topics in this video may be disturbing for some viewers. Viewer discretion is advised. This video is for educational purposes only. The first doctor we'll look at is the famous Joseph Mengele. Mengele worked in Auschwitz and was commonly amongst the doctors who chose the prisoners that would be taken in for testing and those that would be killed in the gas chambers. The main part was maybe the exchange of blood between the twins themselves and others. When picking prisoners to experiment on, he usually selected twins as they had been of interest to him throughout his time as a physician, even before the Holocaust. This opportunity was exciting for him and he was known as one of the few doctors that actually enjoyed selecting who he'd be working on. Mengele also had strong interest in people with different colored irises, dwarves, and those with other physical abnormalities. Most of the reasons given for his strong interest in these types of people were the possibilities of understanding how traits were biologically distributed and the chance that he may better understand how to increase the odds of children being born with Nazi desired traits. If he could discover a way to have twins with the desired traits he was in search of, he would consider that an even bigger accomplishment than anything else he would find in his research. Children would often become fond of Dr. Mengele. He would introduce himself as Uncle Mengele and would bring them sweets as a way to comfort them in the scary times around them. He then would begin some horrific experiments, especially on twins. I have some idea because I have met with the many of the twins that there were different experiments. Not all the experiments were the same. Twins were subject to weekly studies to see the differences in them. He'd amputate limbs, inject them with diseases such as typhus, and transfuse blood between the twins. If one of the twins died during the experimentation process, the other would then be killed to allow for proper comparisons to be made during their autopsies. How could, could someone take parts of bodies and put them into jars? I really couldn't comprehend it. Anyone with heterochromatic or different colored eyes had chemicals put into their eyes while they were still alive to see if he could change the colors. These test subjects, as well as many that had not been experimented on but also had different colored eyes, would be killed and would have their eyes removed and sent to an institute in Berlin for further studies. <laughs> Dwarves fell victim to similar experiments as twins did, but, in addition, would have teeth extracted and would be tested on with medical drugs and x-rays. After about two weeks, they'd be put to death in gas chambers and then have their skeletons sent to Berlin for further examinations. Some survivors, whether they were lucky to be alive or not, told stories of some of the atrocious experiments Dr. Mengele did. This included things such as sewing skins together to try to create conjoined twins and for one unlucky test subject, it involved having a kidney removed without anesthesia. Joseph Mengele went to South Africa after the war, where he would drown in 1979 after suffering a stroke while swimming in the resort. Dr. Klauberg and Dr. Schumann worked closely with each other in Barrack Number 30 in Auschwitz. 
Their main focuses were around the sterilization of women in the quickest way that they could manage. Clawberg, as a gynecologist, would apply a chemical irritant to the fallopian tubes of women to cause inflammation and closing of the tubes. He would then check on the body with x-rays. This procedure usually had issues that led to death of the woman being experimented on. Hemorrhages were frequent, as with peritonitis, which is an inflammation of the tissue that covers most of the organs in your abdomen. Fevers and septus were common among those tested on. If anyone survived the testing, they were commonly put to death just for the sake of performing autopsies later on. Dr. Horst Schumann would take a different approach and would take men and women and would expose their reproductive systems to x-rays. He would also surgically remove one or both of men's testicles or women's ovaries to get samples of their cells and tissue. In addition to this, men would also become victims of his semen checks. A stick with a rubber hose at the end would be put into their rectums and they would be stimulated until they ejaculated. Schumann would send the semen to Breslau along with the testicles and ovaries he removed. In addition to all this, Schumann would also attempt to treat typhus on patients who he injected with the disease personally. Dr. Karl Klauberg died shortly before his trial in 1957. Schumann faced trial in September of 1970 and would be released from prison in July of 1972 due to heart conditions. He died a year later in 1983. Starvation was normal in camps during the Holocaust. Those who asked for medical care or were already there sometimes were chosen by Dr. Creamer to be studied. In particular, he enjoyed making observations on how starvation affected the liver. The methods he took for studying the liver and other organs brought more issues up. Creamer found that living specimens provided the best organs, so he would typically remove them from living patients for that exact reason. In 1947, he was condemned to death but received a presidential reprieve which left him to spend life in prison. Instead, in 1958, he was tried in West Germany and was given to 10 years in prison. But, those 10 years were dismissed as he had already served more than 10 years in Poland, letting him go free. According to him, he had never killed anyone and rather was given dead prisoners, which allowed for his 10 year sentence to be instated. He died in 1965 at the age of 81. Emil Kashub was a doctor sent to Auschwitz to study issues that were coming up from the German army. Many Eastern Front military men were self-inflicting injuries to get out of the war and the government wanted to crack down on it. Many times they would end up with abscesses, fevers, and infectious hepatitis. Dr. Kashub would take healthy prisoners and would rub their skin with various toxins as well as inject them with different chemicals to try to recreate the symptoms of the German soldiers. In addition to this, he also made the prisoners swallow adabrin, which is used to prevent malaria, as well help improve people's immune systems. 